All right, good day everyone. This is the Eco Lens where we explore the big and small questions on sustainability. Today I have Professor Rocky Adiguna from Gajamada University. So he's one of my professors in the ASEAN Master in Sustainability Management Program. Um, and I want to introduce Professor Rocky a bit before we start. So um, Professor Rocky is actually the head of the Management Laboratory the program coordinator of the ASEAN Master in Sustainability Management Program, as well as a lecturer in Gajamada University. So, um, Professor Rocky, I invited you here today, um, finally, because um, it's been quite some time that I'm considering on inviting you for this podcast. And this is actually the seventh episode of the Eco Lens. And I think it's, yeah, it's finally perfect that you're here now. Um, and I guess to kick things off and my first question is actually more of what your journey was like before becoming a lecturer or professor in UGM. So how was your journey mm -hmm. like before getting into this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and thank you for inviting me. And um, um, pleasure. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Also, I've been following your channel, so it's, it's really um, uh, nice to be finally sharing something with you. And um, yeah, about the the journey. Well, before as a professor, I was I was um, continu continuing my study on master degree in Jönköping International Business School in, in Sweden, and I was I was not related somehow um, in in any way in sustainability in the beginning, but I was doing more research on family business, so on family business, on entrepreneurship. That was my my early interest. Uh, before that, I was more into the uh, creative industry. So I used to have the um, like advertising agencies. I like design. I like doing videos. Also um, um, like recordings like this, and that brought me to um, entrepreneurship. And then I was doing research on, on family business in in, in yuan shopping, and afterwards I continue with uh, my PhD in um, also in family business, but in Luxembourg, the, in the University of Luxembourg. And that went on for like four years and then I returned to Indonesia. I applied for a position in Gajah Mada, which was also my, my um, I was an alumni uh, from there. And I started as a professor in 2019, I think, yeah, uh, 19. And um, right after my, uh, yeah, my first year, uh, I was involved in this project on um, the co collaboration between the University of Agder and UGM, which we already have like a um, long history of collaboration. And from that I was, yeah, I was somehow involved in this project and, and was asked to be the coordinator from the uh, UKM side or UGM side. And I accepted that offer. Um, although that, at that moment, I mean, to be honest, I I didn't have the like say the the expertise uh, or academic expertise in in this respect. I, what I what I have only the, an, an interest in the subject. So I was learning on the way too. So that was um, uh, my early touch with uh, the program. And since uh, I was also uh, appointed as the sec uh, executive secretary of ASEAN uh, University Network for Business and Economics, and it just happened that the um, structure was that from the University of uh, University of Agder was uh, in touch with the um, the Embassy of Norway and the Embassy of Norway will provide the financing or the funding of the project through the ASEAN and to ASEAN we need to uh, come to the A AUN ASEAN Uni University Network and then from there go to AUNBE so that kind of chain uh, made me uh, to say involved in this project and and that was the beginning really of, of my involvement in this respect Ian. actually i want to backtrack a bit when you mentioned about um your creative works and family business because um, i did a small research and i saw that you do a lot of work in family business research and creative works um i guess my question would be what do you find the connection of these two things in relation to how you do work in sustainability now yeah and it, actually, it's also interesting to, if I if I look back uh, on on family business and I see the like the ongoing conversation in sustainability. What I see is that in family business they have um, a distinctive feature, which is more into this long term 
few our goals. They have a, a time frame which is more long term in comparison to non-family business. And to me, this um, actually a, a, an opportunity for for family business to to contribute to yeah to make impact, right? And if I see um, some of the let's say the the challenge of of um, businesses is that managers they usually don't have the right incentive to to see things in the long term because they are tied to the performance to the company performance which usually like measured quarterly basis okay and they will get uh, incentive if they can perform well their company perform well <clears throat> which if we see at family business um, usually you need to sacrifice some short-term performance in order to achieve long-term uh, performance or sustainability in this res uh, respect this, which includes uh, the attention to um, um, the employees, the, intention, uh, the attention to the environment, okay? And to me, this um, kind of, if I try to connect the dots, then I see that, well, actually in the family business, there are some, some distinctive feature that actually help them to contribute to sustainability in comparison to non-family business. And to me, this is what I had to say. I need to do more research on this one. But um, for me, that that what I see as a, as a uh, red thread between the two uh, topics. I think that's interesting because, as you mentioned, with family business, um, basically a lot of things can be integrated with sustainability nowadays, including um, the employees, as you mentioned, with family business. And given that, given that um, your background on family business and creativity, so let's move forward to the ASEAN MBA itself, the very topic of today's episode. Um, so you mentioned that you, you've been involved in this project or program for a long time already. Um, how was that involvement like? Uh, what was entailed uh, in line with that? <laughs> So the early, I mean, um, little history about the, the project itself, like um, the early days, uh, maybe around, around 2009, in the end of maybe December 19 or early January 2020, um, we were designing the program um, as part of the interest actually of the um, Norwegian governments in sustainability. And at that moment, um, we couldn't find any um, other programs that is already like having a, a, a strong focus on sustainability while being an MBA. What we found is that yes, we, there are programs on, on, on master degree on, on sustainable development or on sustainability, but not an MBA program. And that um, yeah gave us a challenge. Uh, how can we design this uh, something uh, which have uh, have the emphasis on sustainability. So what we did was that yeah we, we tried to benchmark with other um, um, uh, institutions. There was there's one I think in, in Colombia, and we also saw one in in, in Harvard, although not uh, specifically only one only one part. So there was when I and and Professor Stein Christiansen from uh, University of Akter we tried to okay let's let's design something that is uh, novel with the 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 distinctive point uh, of an interdisciplinary approach. So we try to look back in our resources and in, in Gajah Mada we, we have um, uh, like many faculties with, uh, which already have the, the expertise in that respect and then okay let's, let's make okay, the MBA, so in the, in the beginning the first uh, section of it as a um, we can say traditional MBA with uh, a refocusing on sustainability but in the second part, we will have more specific uh, interdisciplinary approach by um, connecting the students to existing uh, resources that we have in, in, in both in UKM and also in, in, in Agder. So that was the, the main, I would say, um, direction at the moment. Okay, let's, let's try to, to combine these two things, which is also a, a, a risky approach because we don't have other uh, pre-existing examples to do that. And that also and at the same time gives us uh, we can we can state that yes this is a new and and maybe the only program in ASEAN where we combine the two worlds together and that was the the initial uh, direction that we uh, heading we were heading in the beginning Ian. I guess as a disclaimer uh, so for for the ones listening right now uh, so I'm taking the program and one of the things that really attracted me to it well apart from my um, colleague referring it to me um, he emailed me telling me, hey, you should join this program. I think you'd find it interesting. But um, what really struck me the most was when I checked the website, 
it really had this interdisciplinary approach essentially with um, business and the environmental sciences and i find that really interesting because i've been looking for related programs for i guess over a year already and um, it's quite difficult to look for um, mbas maybe in southeast asia that focus on sustainability well there is one here in the philippines but i have a propensity to want to study abroad so that's why i uh, decided to take on this program and yeah i would definitely echo what you mentioned about the design um and in line with that uh, i think I, I find the design to be really interesting the structure itself um what did you see as what did you see are the uh, most relevant challenges that you faced while designing the program i mean even right now you're still um continuing to design the program yeah it is um, probably if we, if we reflect back to our resources, meaning the, the faculty members, the professors, is that yes, we do have we do have the expertise um, um, across the faculty, different faculties, but again, um, sustainability is still seen as something separate from the. If we look at the business perspective, from the um, traditional or conventional business uh, subject. So usually it is contained within uh, business ethics uh, course or, or related courses, but not as a mindset. So this is yeah a, a challenge uh, um, for us uh, in the design team, uh, me and also Professor Stain to 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 persuade um, our faculty members to let's start to think sustainability not as a separate subject but as a mindset that. In any subject that we teach or that we do research, we, we need to take this into consideration, not just um, as a topic, but as a, as a way of, of, of thinking, way of um, um, uh, living even. And, and some, um, some faculty members are still kind of, kind of hesitant and, and, okay, and, and they get the general idea, but when we ask them to, okay, let's, uh, would, you would you like to, to um, have some sessions in this and try to share your thoughts, there were some. Some are quite quite hesitant. So this is also in in in, in the business school uh, itself. Um, adopting this as a mindset is still a challenge. Okay, and fortunately uh, we we have did, uh, been doing the the course for maybe almost one semester um, now. Is that because they see that it worked, and some already like okay, I, I think this is interesting. I would like to learn more about this one. So they see that. Change is happening also thanks to uh, external uh, development that we have um, raising issues on, on climate change, climate crisis and so forth. But also uh, show, uh, uh, seeing that actually okay, um, running this program is actually uh, something different and new. And they, they, they start to believe okay, there is something new in this, something, something different that we can actually uh, learn. Right? So to me, this is both ways that we, we try something new, which is uh, un unproven yet. There is no previous example, but also we try to uh, convey to the wider audience that yes, this is uh, there is some value in, in this new program, that we can actually do something different with this new program, and that to me, yeah, kind of a, a balancing uh, between the two, uh, uh, I would say, two views. Okay, one is that uh, for those who are let's say maybe skeptical or, or maybe not not quite uh, fully convinced. And the other is to, yes, we can actually make a difference with this uh, new program. That's what I see, Ian. I like how we keep mentioning about the uh, inter interdisciplinarity of the program because that's also what I've been looking for quite some time now. Um, and maybe you as a, um, a lecturer yourself in this program, I mean, aside from organizing it, you're also teaching it. Um, it's, it's like a superpower. <laughs> um, what are your insights so far, um, at least in terms of teaching the courses inside the program? Right, Ian. Um, maybe I will um, make this into two parts. First is the um, coordinating part between the different uh, faculty members including other faculties in, in, within the Gajamada University, is that um, sometimes the challenge is really to, to bring people together, okay, in, in, uh, in, uh, to invest time, to, to approach them like, slowly. Uh, sometimes this, this is like a slow process and, and if we are not patient enough, we might um, 
how to say, maybe you even feel frustrated. But I think the patience to to connect people and to bring people together to to allow some time for them to um, uh, to get the ideas, okay, and for us to design together, I think that would be the the key in 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 in, in bringing this program um, as a, as a reality. So we we spend a lot of time coordinating uh, with other faculty members, and this um, also thank, thanks to Professor Stein that this is uh, possible. Because he was also, um, I would say, play a major role as well in this pro uh, in this program, where he is um, really um, taking care into the the details, okay, uh, inviting people, um, talking to them one by one, okay, which maybe for for some of us maybe not that patient. Okay, so the coordinating co coordinating part plays a, a key role. The other part on the, on the teaching part is that we, at least um, in our experience, also. Um, teaching one semester uh, from the sharing of the lectures, we were surprised and, 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 and I would say even humbled by the spirit of the students. And well, I would I would uh, ascribe this to the, the selection process. That it also the sign that okay, we we did the selection process uh, correctly because we selected the, the best students really. And but what we what we got is that. We have a, a diverse background of the students, and we have the the spirit, okay, of the learning spirit, which, in combination, it creates an, an atmosphere of learning that is enriching, also for the for the teachers themselves, for the lecturers. So um, I, I got uh, um, um, yeah some pr several um, uh, testimonial from the lecturers that wow, this is this class is really um, um, different. They are eager to learn. Okay, even uh, from um, from Agder also said that wow, they they even uh, have uh, this this uh, strong um, willingness to to learn new things, and they really like it, and they, that gives them energy. Okay, so teaching, I think it it is inseparable also with the students' um, role in terms of participation or engagement. Okay, so um, we would. Okay, we, we only play a like half a role here in terms of teaching itself, but in the interaction within the class, I think that's what makes this this uh, program different. Okay, so yeah, I would I'd say teaching is is yeah um, only half of the story. Okay, and the interaction in, in the class that's the 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 another story, which is uh, so far has been very uh, satisfactory. That is what I what I see and. Since we're talking about um, the teaching aspect now, um, I wanted to go to the next question. But before that, I want to backtrack a bit again. Because um, uh, what you mentioned reminded me of a conversation I had with one of my friends who is currently a professor in the Philippines. And um, one of his challenges really is that, um, well, sometimes it's a reality. Sometimes students tend to lack being proactive. And that's why it's it gets difficult to teach the subject. So in a way, education is also a two-way communication. You know, so the the course itself have to be well designed, but at the same time, the students also have to take the initiative and be proactive in actually participating. Um, and I guess that's what I see in my cohort. Um, personally, I, I I was quite surprised as well because. Um, well, I could probably I could proudly say that we're quite unique because we're always um, active in class. We're usually communicating as well, and yeah, I, I guess that would be one of our competitive edge in this program in a way. And yeah, so that that brings me to my next question, and it's with regard to the role of business in teaching sustainability to future sustainability leaders. And I believe you recently had. Um, a webinar or a talk about this topic. So, would you mind sharing your insights on that? Yeah, I think yeah. With, with sustainability, is that if we if we see on expertise, we we are not lacking. Okay, meaning that if we look into different um, areas in our let's say um, the research field, we will find expertise. We will find um, knowledge there. Okay, and and the challenge is really more into integration. How can we integrate those knowledge? How can we Make people come together and 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 agree on on something and and tackle this this challenge. 
With regard to the role of business, uh, I don't know if it's a business school you mean or business itself towards sustainability. The business school. Yeah. Okay, business school, right, yeah. So for so far or for so long, we were we were too much focused on, on the, the traditional, I would say, um, way of seeing business okay, in, in terms of profit. Okay. Although this is not to, I would say, uh, dismiss the, the idea that yes, uh, we do have our local wisdom and we, we are also concerned on social aspects. But um, again, the sustainability aspect is, is seen more as, a, as an addition topic rather than as a, as a core concern. And this shifting is, is difficult, okay, because it is a tradition in, in the business school okay, to teach in a certain way. We have our certain, certain textbooks, okay, we, 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 uh, we are measured in a certain way. So when we want to shift uh, the, the view of business schools, it is, um, as, as, you, as we had in, 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 in any change um, initiative, there will be some resistance, there will be some hesitations, okay, if not open resistance. And I believe on sustainability is it is it is more as a as a hesitation, okay. And and the, the um, people are generally uh, willing to to participate to contribute, but then because um, um, they they will enter again okay, an area which uh, may be required interdisciplinary, and this creates kind kind of um, um, maybe some 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 uh, part will be un, un, really uncomfortable because it is outside of their area of expertise. Okay, so business schools really need to step out of their um, silo to open up collaboration with other faculty uh, or other uh, areas of research outside of social science to the natural science. Okay, in order to bring these sustainability issues together as a, as a problem to be solved instead of a problem to be uh, complained. Okay, people are complaining about uh, climate crisis and so forth, but Solutions is, remains difficult or, or tricky or, 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 or uncertain. Okay, but if we utilize the knowledge, not not in uh, I would say um, in silo, right? Not uh, only from one perspective, but we take from our uh, multidisciplinary. I think there is a chance to to open up new possibilities, and at times uh, the challenge is really to, only to this opening up of our walls here to invite others to come together, or even for us, in this case, business school, to come to their uh, areas, okay? Sometimes we are hesitant to move, um, or to, to allow ourselves to travel, to traverse boundaries, okay? Because maybe we are, we are losing, we feel maybe that we are losing our grounds, we are not um, um, experts in that area, okay? But why not approach other areas with a um, more humble, Feel that yes, we don't know that why. Uh, that's why we come to you and we want to learn from you and let's work together. Sometimes this is the the, the, the biggest challenge to to connect with other uh, uh, areas of research or areas of um, or faculty uh, and other disciplines. And and yeah, um, if I if I may um, re-emphasize, it's really on the connecting with other disciplines and be willing to admit that, yes, we don't know that area, and that's why let's work together. Um, so I do have a question in relation to that, um, but I also want to share another conversation I had with uh, my professor friend before. Um, and even in the Philippines, one of our challenges really, at least in the academe, is, um, for example, you have this big university and you have the you have the college of science the college of arts college of business there's a tendency to think in silos and it's quite difficult to sometimes put together all these different expertise and knowledge so to come up with um, something as integrated as sustainability um, i guess my question is um, since this seems to be a shared experience among different universities not just here in asia but of course, uh, in the world as well. Um, in your in your perspective, what do you think are the factors that are stopping us from integrating all these different things? Right, right. Thanks, Ian. Um, let's see. If I look uh, reflectively, um, I don't think there is a, a, a challenge in terms of um, 
good intentions people i think i see people who have good intentions to collaborate however i would maybe bring this to the way the higher education system is being measured or, or is it being um, organized okay and at times it comes back to those administrative requirements that is placed onto faculties or faculty members or even universities. Okay, and more specifically, some accreditation, I would say, requirements. Okay, and okay, I will maybe a little bit um, move away from from sustainability. Um, if we see in, in business schools, uh, we have this AACSB accreditation, which is um, let's say the the um, the the how to say the, the ultimate or one of the the well known or well recognized uh, accreditation. At the moment, it doesn't how to say um, have an explicit measure on sustainability just yet. Okay, but I see that it will come maybe in in the near future that they will measure how uh, business schools okay contribute to sustainability or sustainable uh, related issue. And, but for others, other faculties, okay, they, maybe they, they have their own uh, measures and, and, and if we want to engage them to, to collaborate and, and that will create additional, let's say, um, um, administrative works and they, people tend, tend to avoid that and people tend to, um, 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 for the sake of fulfilling administrative requirements, they don't want to engage in, in let's say, collaboration. To me, maybe this is more an in, in, in Indonesian uh, perspective, but um, at times the good intention of collaboration is defeated by the regulatory or the, the framework or any administrative uh, obligations. Okay, so they, they, they avoid to, to uh, let's say to engage in our in further collaboration because they, they are afraid they cannot fulfill certain aspects of uh, uh, administration. To me, this is kind of um, yeah. It, it's a defeating. I mean, the 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 um, you don't you don't let's say you don't engage in in innovation not because you don't want to, but because you're you're afraid of uh, not not be able to be measured as a successful uh, institution. Okay, so administration is 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 uh, let's say one 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 aspect here that can can inhibit. Okay. The other is that um, we are, I think uh, every institution has been operating efficiently, okay, as part of their 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 day-to-day -day routine. And if you want to engage in a new collaboration, it means you're, you're, how to say, you're halting the efficient process. You will, you will have a, 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 a new process, which is new, uh, uh, which is different. Maybe you don't have any history before. Okay, and that will create inefficiency. Okay, and people have to think more. They have to invest resources in this new, 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 new collaboration. And that, for some institution, is, is seen as as a, as a hassle. Okay, let's just do business as usual. Do what we are, we always do. Okay, and and we will be efficient. No need to um, um, invest in new things. Okay, and this is where we need to kind of um, um, speak differently to different uh, stakeholders or different collaborators that. Well, okay, this will uh, mean maybe new, let's say, work for you to, to think about new things. But uh, we need to also bring them to the benefits that we will uh, have in the, in the future. Okay, that, well, you have the, actually this opportunity to, to, to seize if you uh, start early uh, working on this collaboration. So competing priorities of, of uh, institutions uh, is a challenge. Okay, uh, if we go back to the willingness, I think people are, are quite willing to collaborate. But when it comes to more um, nitty gritty, more uh, practical, technical aspects, there are some, some other say, some breaking points that we need to be careful that, okay, we need to uh, be with them uh, in order to uh, convince them that yeah, let's, let's go ahead with this collaboration. We, we will have some, some values in this. I think that would be the, uh, the challenge yeah, that I see in my experience. Actually, I wanna. I, I'd like to highlight what you mentioned about you know the the technical and the practical aspects as well as the administrative aspects, um, because well, this is quite far from the our discussion on sustainability. But I think it's an external factor nonetheless. Um, so well, uh, 
so based also on my conversations before, uh, I guess um, sometimes the administrative work in the academe tends to be um, it tends to be too much for professors to the extent that um, they don't uh, have enough time for say research or more meaningful work. Um, even myself, when I was still um, a research assistant at a university uh, research center, majority of what I did was mainly on the administrative side. <laughs> so even though we were a research center, um, I, I guess around 60% or 70% of what we did is admin work. You know, things like um, fixing databases or scheduling uh, meetings, those kinds of things. Um, um, well, I don't regret it because we also did quite a number of good research back then. But I would definitely um, highlight those, uh, I guess, challenges as well. But essentially, I think it's admin work is already part of the academe. I, I guess there has there just has to be a way to um, make it more efficient so that uh, programs like uh, you know uh, sustainability programs would be uh, implemented better. Um, so at this point, I uh, actually want to go to a much broader view. And so recently, um, in we know that the COP26 was recently finished. And um, from what I read, initially we were planning to, for example, uh, phase out coal in, in, in the world. But what happened was it the agreement become became watered down and we just decided to face down coal um well this is just one aspect of the conference that struck me the most um because it makes me reflect whether we will still have time because the deadline that we gave ourselves is 2030 for um bef for our net zero commitments and if we don't reach those commitments we would essentially be going towards um, tipping points or beyond planetary boundaries, as they say. Um, what are your thoughts on this on a broader scope? Um, perhaps to make it more grounded, what, how can business schools um, uh, respond to these, these very big challenges that we have today? Yeah, Bian, thank you. So I think that in, in, in some um, areas in, in business schools, including in, in higher education, there are movements uh, in this respect to 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 see more seriously on sustainability, to work together, to collaborate together. So, despite the challenges um, on the ground on technical aspects on, on collaborating, okay, we see some movements. Okay, and that's that's um, I think I think the yeah the the good point the, our our hope that um, change is actually happening, right? So. For um, maybe not only business school but also uh, higher e education in, in general, universities, okay. A more serious uh, attention, um, a more, um, um, I would say, integrated attempt, okay, to not only to um, research about sustainability but also to teach, but also to try out new things. Okay, to solve uh, uh, climate uh, challenges are key. Okay, and we we see we see uh, we see in, uh, initial movements in this respect at, at, at the moment. What what I can tell also is that um, in, in the Kachamada we also in, being involved in the, another network called uh, Asia Network for Green Entrepreneurship and Leadership, or we call it Angel. This is uh, also collaboration between the, uh, the European uh, Commission uh, with the EU and um, ASEAN. Uh, we have also some uh, around 11 universities in ASEAN, which attempt to uh, build capacity in terms of green entrepreneurship and green leadership, including sustainability. So I think the responsibility for business school is to bring this not as a separate subject, as, a, an, as an extra, but how can we make this as a core, as a mindset? Okay, which also true in, in terms of business as well. I mean, sometimes when we, we, we go into the business sphere uh, and the, and the, well, for practitioners, uh, the, the, the challenge is on mindset. Okay, and it, it goes the same with the uh, business school uh, themselves. And yeah, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm 
it's difficult really to uh, to to see how this will contribute to the to the global scale. But uh, if we if I see on the ASEAN scale, the regional scale, then I think we have we have been part of the early movement. Okay, and what I can see is that if this goes well, or if uh, we are if we are successful in this first attempt, this will trigger okay other uh, more ripple effect that people will have more uh, um, attention in this respect and you uh, i think the students also including the, the lecturers the professors we will also um, create effects to our surroundings okay by bringing this issue more uh, centrally as a, as a problem as a, as, a, as a core issue so what i can see is that let's just let's keep doing okay what we do okay and then we have been part of the early movement so if we can do this um, in a coordinated manner, in an integrated manner, also with the spirit of collaboration, we, we try to connect with other parties as much as, as we can, there will, there will be a higher chance that uh, we can make a real impact in the society. Okay? Although we don't, I, I don't know how to measure it, okay? but uh, uh, I think by utilizing our network okay, and our uh, strong commitment, I think there, there is a chance of, 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 of impact there. That's what I believe in. I think that's a perfect segue to my last question for today. Um, and thank you again for coming. So my last question is, um, so for people who um, want to create a sustainable impact in their career and in their life, um, what would your advice be? <laughs> right, yeah. This is the like the litmus test. People say that if you can do it, then you can you can do it in large scale. I would say that start start with doing this in, in your in your own life. In, meaning that if you're if your family doing this in, in your in your own household, try to adopt that practice of sustainability in your daily life. Try it first. Okay, as simple as I think you have also good uh, movements there on, on your on your cohorts some clean plate movement, some uh, other other movement, which is, it will make you think by doing that. Say as simple as, 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 as uh, eating uh, what you have until it's clean, okay, how you, you wash the dishes yourself, you, you, you start to think, okay, what is the implication of my action? Okay, and th that will, will uh, bring you to a larger scale of, okay, in every action there will be some, some uh, consequences. And we need to expand this uh, mindset or time frame of consequences way, way far ahead. Okay, and and by practicing those uh, sustainable, let us say, a lifestyle daily, okay, it will makes you think. I think that's this thinking aspect is key. Okay, some people are, are ignoring. Uh, that's dangerous. Like if you if you're thinking, if you're critically thinking about um, how. Um, um, your action will impact on sustainability, on, on the climate, on the environment. That is good. That's a good starting point, and that is key. Okay, we we have a challenge here too. How we turn ignorant people to people who who care. Okay, and and if you're already on the care side, that's a good that's a good news. Okay, we still need to face a, a bigger, how to say, uh, chunk of society who ignore this problem. And then let's, let's face them, okay? Let's try to connect with them, try to engage them in order to, to think at least.